Now, uh, we have mentioned rules of evidence. Um, we have also mentioned that it uh, varies by uh, jurisdiction. Um, but we do have um, international uh, rules um, in terms of forensics and, and collection of evidence. Um, and these principles, um, IOCE G8, maybe it's not G7, um, international principles, uh, these, uh, well, they're, they're principles. There's not exactly rules, so they're sort of guidelines. Um, but, uh, you know, it is sort of best practice, so good advice. Um, the first being that you should maintain consistency with all legal systems. Now, uh, this is... Um, more easily uh, stated than followed uh, do you know all the principles for all the legal systems but um, in, in general um, try and make sure that you uh, be as conservative as, as possible you know um, be uh, be fair uh, don't pull any fast ones. Um, you know, be careful in, in that regard in terms of collecting evidence, in terms of search and seizure. Um, don't uh, do anything that is kind of close to the line and you wonder if maybe uh, somebody's going to object. You wonder if somebody's going to object. Somebody's probably going to object. And like I say, in court... They don't have to prove you did something wrong. They just had to raise the question, you know, is this reasonable? And that may get your evidence thrown out. So don't give them that opportunity. Um, allowance for the use of a common language. Um, uh, so, you know, be, be careful when you're dealing, you're dealing with multiple jurisdictions. Uh, you know, if you've got a, a, a wiretap, um, a radio transmission, then, um, you know, have the original, have the original transcribed, uh, have somebody listen to the original and give you a translation and transcription of the but you know have that available to everybody and and if you have a a multi-jurisdictional situation uh where you've got different parties involved in different areas in different countries speaking different languages and particularly the law enforcement people and the legal profession speaking different languages in those different jurisdictions, then you have to do, you know, all of this. And so make it available. But, um, you know, common language and communications is always going to be very important. Um, durability. The most durable uh, form of evidence is preferred. And once again, we are already uh, in a disadvantage in terms of uh, digital forensics because we've got uh, all kinds of evidence that is ephemeral, uh, that is temporary, um, and we have to put it in a durable form. Um, and honest to goodness, printing it out on paper... Um, even if it's not readable on paper by, you know, human beings, is, and, and comprehensible, that is more durable than tapes or discs or, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, all kinds of things can go wrong with all kinds of storage 
devices. So make sure that it is, in fact, durable. Um, can the evidence cross international boundaries? Uh, and again, we've talked about you know, issues of encryption, um, uh, issues of the, uh, the different rules of evidence, what is going to be considered evidence in different jurisdictions. Um, we you know, have to consider that and, and what is going to be acceptable in a court in a different jurisdiction. Um, plus, of course, the uh, legal aspect of, you know, did we steal it and did we smuggle it out of the country? Um, you know. uh, the evidence should instill confidence in the interpretation. Um, and, you know, this is, this is part of what we have to do in terms of the foundation of admissibility is, it, you know, does this prove the story that we're trying to tell? Um, so we need to, to look at that carefully. Uh, availability to all forensic evidence. Again, you know, discovery issue there. Availability at every... Uh, sorry, applicability at every level. So these international principles, um, when you're dealing with digital evidence, uh, you know, you should apply this um, to everything, all of these principles. When you're seizing digital evidence, the accident actions taken should be consistent with these principles. Um, when it is necessary for a person to handle, to collect, to preserve evidence, they should be trained for the purpose. And all activity relating to the seizure, access, preservation, presentation of evidence must be fully documented and preserved so that it can be presented. Uh, an individual who is responsible for all of this um, should be trained, possibly even certified, and any agency which is responsible for it uh, needs to follow the principles and demonstrate that they have done so. <laughs>